to know more such amazing stories from Indian history, click the bell icon and subscribe to Live History India. This city hides within its folds 600 years of history. And in its quaint neighborhoods and hidden corners, you will also feel the pulse of the vibrant cultural heritage that made the walled city of Ahmedabad India's first UNESCO World Heritage City. This is where the story of the city begins. The Manik Burj on the banks of the Sabarmati River marks the site where the foundation stone of the city was laid in 1411. It was then that Ahmed Shah, the Sultan of Gujarat, decided to build his capital here, over the older villages of Karnavati and Ashawal. The Bhadra Fort marked the seat of power and formed the heart of this new walled capital, surrounded by 12 gates. The oldest monuments in the city come from the Sultanate period. Starting with Ahmed Shah's Masjid, the city's oldest mosque, which was most probably used by the royals. Within the wall city, you will find the Rani Siprini Masjid, built by Rani Sabrai, the widow of Sultan Muhammad Shah Begada. It is also called Masjid Nagina or Jewel of the Mosque due to its elegant proportions, intricate carvings, and slender minarets. The most famous landmark of the wall city is, however, the Siddhi Sayyidni Masjid built in the 1570s. This houses the most famous symbol of the city, the exquisite tree of life. The wall city of Ahmedabad has as many as 2,000 heritage buildings and many of these are iconic landmarks. To get a feel of them, you have to make your way on foot. The most popular walking trail is the Mandir to Masjid or Temple to Mosque trail that starts here at the Swami Narayan Temple which is ornate and richly embellished. This temple, built in 1822, is the oldest Swami Narayan temple in the world and was established by Sahaja Nand Swami, the founder of the Swami Narayan sect himself. A standout feature of the temple is the Sabha Mandap, right opposite the main shrine. Over here, you will find stories from the revolt of 1857. One can see the Rani of Jhasi and other heroes of the revolt in the brackets of the pillars here. From here, once outside the temple, you will step into a network of small neighbourhoods that make the city famous. These are the poles. These small, closely packed neighbourhoods with their own unique flourishes. Walk into the Navovas, for instance, and the first thing you will see is a bulletin board with information residents can use. As you make your way on, one of the first areas you will find is the Kavi Dalpatram Chowk. This great poet, social reformer and scholar of Gujarat lived in Lambeshwarnipol and his house stood at the very spot at which the memorial is today. Here there is a sculpture of Dalpatram made of Ashtadhatu, the alloy of eight metals which has great spiritual significance. The sculpture shows us the attire which he would have worn in the 19th century with a pagri, angarakha, dhoti and mojri on his feet. From here you come to the site of Calico Dome one of 20th century Ahmedabad's architectural marvels, which was unfortunately destroyed due to the 2001 earthquake. Go further down and you will find the Kala Ramji temple, one of the oldest temples in the city. It has the distinction of having an extremely rare sculpture of Lord Ram sitting in Padmasan or the lotus position made out of black stone. Look around and you can see the Burma teak pillars with intricately carved capitals beautiful brackets and railings. Note that the temple doesn't have a shikhar. It also functions as a residence of the priest's family. From here, you'll make your way through a series of poles or neighbourhoods. Shantinathni pole is a predominantly Jain pole with two temples dedicated to Tirthankar Shantinath in it. It is a typical pole with ornate havelis and a chabutra in the middle. On the lintel of the temple, at the entrance of the pole, you can see sculptures of young boys in western clothing engrossed in their books. Sitting between the boys is Goddess Saraswati holding her sitar, albeit dressed in western outfit. 
Outside this pool, you will find a hidden passage that will take you further into the neighborhoods. From here, you will pass a network of similar pools which all have their own unique flourishes, exquisite houses and even little bird feeders for passing parrots. As you make your way on foot, you will pass the Kuawala Khachu, which literally translates to street with a well, and then the Jagwalab temple, dedicated to Tirthankar Parshavnath. The Zaveri Ward is a neighborhood created by Saint Shanti Das Zaveri, who was the court jeweler to the Mughals. The Doshiwadani pole, in an area dominated by local jewelers, is an exquisite example of a colonial haveli. The Ashtapadji Jain Temple was constructed in the mid 1800s and is dedicated to the Jain Tirthankars Adinath and Vardhaman Mahavir. On the exterior, one can see elegantly carved stone balconies in typical Gujarati style. The Harkuvar Shethani Haveli was constructed by Harkuvar Shethani of the Hati Singh family. The family was actively trading with China, and the Chinese influence can be seen with the dragon motifs on the exterior. Further on, Muhurat Pole is the first pole in the city. It is believed that when Ahmad Shah first established the city, he lived in this pole. It is situated at a prominent location, right next to Manik Chowk, the hub of the bullion market in Ahmedabad. The entrance of the pole faces the Grand Ahmedabad Stock Exchange building. Manik Chowk was the original market of the city. It is named after Manik Baba, whose temple is still here. Legend goes that it was with his blessings that Ahmad Shah managed to complete the fortification of his capital. The foundation of the city's wall was named Manik Burj in his honour. Down the Manik Chowk, you have the royal tombs of the Sultanate period, the Rani no Hajiro for the queens and the Badshah no Hajiro for the sultans, including Ahmad Shah himself. The walk ends with the biggest mosque of Ahmedabad, Juma Masjid. This sandstone masjid established by Ahmad Shah was the largest mosque in the country when it was constructed in the year 1424. One can see many influences of Hindu art and architecture in the masjid. There are three main arches on the facade of the prayer hall. On the flanks of the arches you can see tree-like motifs, which are influenced from the Kalpavriksh. The Mandir to Masjid walk is the best way to see the heart of Ahmedabad's walled city. The quaint poles of Ahmedabad represent the vibrant living legacy of the city. The richly embellished houses here also represent the wealth Ahmedabad's merchant princes were famous for. Many of them helped shape the city, leaving behind some iconic landmarks from the old temples like the Hati Singh Jain Temple built in 1848 to the Grand Havelis. Like the poles of Ahmedabad, the Havelis also have their own unique flares. They are as practical as they are beautiful. This house, owned by Jagdeep Mehta, is an excellent example of the traditional architecture of Amdavadi Havelis. Marked with a central courtyard open to the sky, the interiors are traditional and yet in keeping with the times. Restored beautifully, in this Haveli, you will also find the water harvesting system that these old houses and neighborhoods were famous for. The Tanka which was a subterranean water reservoir where rainwater was collected in pipes from the roof and could last a whole year. This one here can hold up to 15,000 litres of water. The story of the wall city of Ahmedabad and how it became an internationally renowned UNESCO World Heritage Site has many lessons. The most important being that in all cities like this, heritage is alive, not just frozen in time. The best example of that is the fact that Manik Chowk, the 600-year-old commercial heart of the city, remains a hub even today. <laughs>